how's it going and welcome back to another video. This week I am filming a video that I have tried to film literally about three times now. Last week I did my first ever live surgery. I know, exciting. exciting. Yay, Yay, my first, my life, first surgery. life surgery. And I thought I would show you how I prepared for the surgery. So originally I planned on filming this video before I did the surgery and then showing you what I was gonna do before I did the surgery. That didn't work out. The surgery that we're doing, I can't really talk about too much because we've been told that we like can't do that. We are in groups of three amongst our class. One person is the surgeon, one person is assistant surgeon, and the third person is the anaesthetist for the patient. That is me. <laughs> I am the anaesthetist this time round, or I was the anaesthetist this time round. And so I'm just gonna show you how I prepare for that. I'm also gonna practice my suturing a little bit because I just thought that would be interesting for you guys to watch and how I practice my suturing. And I thought we could just like hang out while I show you how I did prepare for my surgery that I did earlier this week. I've got my coffee. And we're just gonna pretend that the writing on my shirt is not backwards. Let me get some paper. Gosh, I'm so prepared and so organized for this video. Let's, let's start from the top. So, anesthesia. When you get a patient into a hospital and you need to do surgery, there are there's a process that you need to go through to do the surgery and to make sure that the patient is healthy and looked after and well throughout it. And anesthesia can be a very, what's the right word? It can be a niggly thing. It can be quite difficult to do, depending on the risk factors that your patient has, say if it's an older patient or a very unwell patient. Say you have a dog, we need to do anesthesia on it for some reason, but you can pick a reason. First, you get the dog in front of you and depending on the patient, you might have to do pre-med. Pre-med or pre-medication is maybe pain relief and a sedative that you give the patient. This makes them easier to like deal with. It makes them more comfortable depending on how unwell they are. The second step is your induction drugs. It's a, either a stronger sedative or a general anesthetic or a dissociative, something like ketamine that you'd give to the patient to induce them so that they are under general anesthesia before you give them the gas so that you can intubate them. That's the third step, is intubation. Intubation is where you get a tube and you put it down their throat into their trachea. You have access to their airway while they're under general, general anesthesia. This is good for two reasons. One, you can give them oxygen, which will keep them alive. The second reason is so that you can give them gaseous anesthetic. Then you have to monitor the patient throughout surgery, and then you have to reverse them or wake them up or stop anesthesia and they'll slowly come to by themselves. And then you have to do the recovery phase, which is when you look after your patient and make sure it's fine coming out of anesthesia. You might need to give it oxygen, you might need to give it pain relief, it depends on the type of surgery you have, but recovery, you just need to be looking after the patient and make sure it's got everything that it needs to become fine again. So that's anesthesia as a whole. So the next thing that you need to be concerned about when you're doing anesthesia on a patient is the different phases or planes of anesthesia. So there's four stages of anesthesia and four planes of anesthesia. The first two stages are pretty much uh, impossible to see because the patient goes down so fast that you can't even really tell what's going on. The third phase is the surgical phase, which is the phase that you're trying to get to. The first surgical phase or plane one is light. So they might still have a blink reflex if you touch the corner of their eye. They might still have a pretty decent jaw tone. The most ideal phase of anesthesia that you want to get your patient into is phase three, stage two, which is moderate depth. You don't want to get too deep. Their respiratory and cardiovascular system will have to overcompensate. Monitoring anesthesia is quite difficult in terms of keeping them at the right phase of anesthesia. My flatmates have just come home. What are you talking about? There are certain things that you need to monitor when you are doing anesthesia. You need to monitor their heart rate, their respiratory rate, their blood pressure, their temperature, their capillary refill time, which I talk about in my veterinary basic 
Netflix video, their mucous membrane color, their SpO2, their oxygen levels. This will all come from a machine that they are hooked up to. There's various different kinds of machines that you can use. It can also be really important to check their reflexes throughout the surgery to check that they're not getting too light. Eye position, depending on the species, it might be down, middle, or up. Okay, now we're gonna move on to some calculations. I am going to talk you a little bit through about how you would do a drug calculation. We're gonna pick a random drug. Say it's an antibiotic, right? We have an antibiotic and we need to give this to our patient. We need to know the dose rate and we need to know the concentration of the drug. Both of these things will be given to you either by the vet that you're being supervised by or the, the drug label itself. So you can get both of those things. Dose rate is um, the milligrams per kilogram or migs per keg, depending on the weight of the animal that you have, how many milligrams you should be giving. The concentration is gonna be the migs per mil or milligrams per mil. We need to calculate the dose in milligrams and we also need to calculate the volume in mils. If it's going in the vein, then it's gonna be intravenous and it's gonna be a liquid. So you need to work out volume. Where's my calculator? Here it is. Uh, so let's just pick some random numbers. Let's say this antibiotic has a dose rate of five and it has a concentration of 0.5. We need to calculate the dose. Say our patient is 10 kgs. What you need to do is to get the dose, you need to times your dose rate by the kilograms, which in our case is five times 10, which is 50. 50 milligrams. Then to get the volume, what you need to do is divide the dose by the concentration. So in this case, it's 50 divided by 0.5, which is 100. Wow, that is a huge amount of drug. That is our dosages and stuff for drug calculations. All right, so now we're gonna do something fun. Practice my suturing. So a while ago, I was really keen and eager and I ordered myself a suture kit. It's called the Suture Buddy. Um, it cost me quite a bit of money, um, not gonna lie, it was expensive. It basically comes with fake skin and it's a really weird texture and some tools. I thought that um, you could watch me practice my suturing. This is where I wish I had a proper camera so that I could have two different angles and you could watch me suture from one angle and watch my face from another. But um, unfortunately we're working on a budget here because I'm a student. Front facing phone camera is what we're working with. So these are six and a half surgeon's gloves. I took these out of a lab. Fun fact about me, I'm actually allergic to latex. <laughs> Gosh, I am totally the wrong person to be talking to. I don't even know the names of things. Forceps and needle holders. Needle holders are exactly what they sound like. They hold your needle. Wow, I feel, all of a sudden I feel really nervous. I'm gonna practice my simple interrupted sutures first. If you wanna see actual good suturing videos, suture them up online. I'm like shaking. Did you just see that? It's the caffeine, it's definitely not because I'm nervous. You roll it through, wow. Tie a knot by going round your scissors and you grab the end of the suture and then you tie it flat down. And again, roll, pick up the end of your suture and tie a knot flat. This will create a square knot, which is what you wanna do. Then again, wrap round, Pull through, square. How many have I done? So that's my first knot. Wow, okay, so that is a simple interrupted suture. Now I'm gonna practice my simple continuous, which is basically where you don't stop. I'm gonna have to refilm this in the future when I have two cameras so that I can get a really good shot. Then you make a little knot deep under the skin. I'm gonna call that quits on my simple continuous. Wow, I should really do this more often. I'd probably get really good at suture. Roll, grab the loop, pull through. Here is my um, simple interrupted. 
and here is my simple continuous. It's not great. We're not gonna, we're not gonna shame me for it. This is a close up of the skin, and I would highly recommend this if you're looking for an actual fake skin. You don't need it if you're practicing your suturing. You definitely don't need it, but I wanted to be bougie. This is the company that I got mine from, the Suture Buddy. Um, not sponsored, obviously. No one cares about me enough at this point to sponsor me. <laughs> Exciting news. There's a company slash website called VetX International. It's an international veterinary website for practices or veterinarians or people just wishing to further themselves in the veterinary profession. And they asked me to be their guest blogger this month and I wrote an article for them. I will link it down in the description. I posted about it over on my Instagram. Um, I have some cute photos of me and some scrubs. Oh, I can show you my scrubs and stuff. So, uh, I can take these off now. Oh. Uh, my scrubs I got from Medi Scrubs, which is really exciting, and they have my last, I got my last name embroidered on it because I thought that would be really professional. Yeah, so they're just like plain black scrubs because I really like to wear black. I don't know if you knew that about me, but I, my friends always make fun of me because I don't really wear much color. I also have matching black scrub pants. Um, these are just the regular style, whatever the cheapest style was on the Midi Scrubs website and I really like these as well. I've talked about this before but my stethoscope is a Littman stethoscope. I talked about it in my what's in my bag video. I hope this was helpful or interesting or you learned something or maybe you just wanted to see me screw up my suturing. My hands are really itchy after those latex gloves. Thank you very much for watching. I, I would love it if you could go check out my article on VX International. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Thank you.